Smith hits a fly ball deep to right field. And it's gone. Haven Smith had accomplished quite a bit before he became famous. At just 21 years old, he'd already won a college baseball national championship at Virginia and been among the very first picks in the 2017 draft. But what Pavin did just after that created a social media sensation and put him on every national television show in America. Okay, just home and love. The words are small. Four little letters unto each. And yet, you will not find it all. The way a gracious range of speech. Two more so tenderly complete when angels talk in heaven above. I'm sure they have no words more sweet than home and love. Home. Thank you for raising me in a great home filled with love because of all the sacrifices you made to get me where I am. I want our family. I want our family home to be yours. So I am. I just had a something in my heart telling me. You know, my parents, I would not be here without them. They've sacrificed so much throughout, you know, whether it's traveling to all the games. And, you know, now that I'm growing up in, I'm getting older and you have, you know, certain friends that have kids or you know people that have kids and like how much they're complaining about going and driving and like for all these kids tournaments and stuff and how tired they get from it just really even puts into perspective more how much you know, my parents love doing it for me and, you know, it's definitely not easy and it costs a lot of money. So being able to repay them with the mortgage, I think, uh, was something that still doesn't even, you know, prove or provide what they did for me, but uh, it was something cool. What's the evolution of that idea from when you first thought of it or was it suggested to you or to that moment with your mom and your dad? Yeah, I was talking with my agent about it, you know, whether it was, you know, a vacation, uh, just something I knew I wanted to do something nice for him. I didn't know what it was and then I didn't even really know how mortgages worked or anything like that and my mom was trying to become a real estate agent and she was kind of just explaining it to me uh, in no way like hinting that they wanted to sure. get it paid off or anything but she was just explaining how it worked and how it was a little bit of a burden for them knowing that they were gonna have to travel out to Arizona and stuff. So that was a big thing once I paid off. They were so excited because they were gonna be able to spend that money that they were gonna spend on the mortgage to be able to, you know, fly out to Arizona and watch me play a little bit more. It became viral. Yeah. Uh, what was that like for you? Yeah, so I didn't tell anybody in my family, not my sisters, not, I couldn't risk, uh, you know, them. No, no leaks. So it was just, I, me, my agent, and my financial advisor were the only people that knew. So it was like after everyone opened presents on Christmas, it was like one last thing in the tree. It's like a little envelope. And it was like a letter that me and my financial advisor like put together, like kind of like a poem. And I just told my sister to video it. And they still didn't know. So like, why, why do we have to video it? It was funny because one of my sisters was like over their shoulder reading it. And she became like some of the jokes of the internet because she had like her bare feet out and like they were like making fun of her and it was just like they called her the Wendy's girl which was kind of funny but she didn't like it very much. So what are you there's a shot the camera or the phone pans over and there's a quick shot of you listening mm -hmm. to your mom read that letter. Yeah. Can you tell us what that exact moment was like for you? Yeah I got pretty emotional too just seeing I could like tell the moment they realized what was happening and like the, the face of their or their you know, change of expression and I don't know it was super cool just to see you know for me being able to provide something for them after they've provided everything for me first round draft pick you were drafted seventh overall what's that like what's it like to be a first round pick yeah it's super cool you know it's something you dream about your whole life you know you work every day going to the cages and you know, you think in you're in like middle school and elementary school when you, you know, are writing to what you want to be when you grow up. And it's well, kind of far-fetched a little bit, you, th you think, because you have other people telling you like, you know, that's great and all, but, but for it to actually come to fruition is, you know, super cool. I still like watch, I watched a commercial today and it was like Yankees versus Red Sox this weekend. I'm like, I'm in that same league, you know, it's like, it's pretty cool to think about. That's awesome. Yeah. It went really well. Mm -hmm. First round pick, seventh overall. What was that day like for you? I remember we got up. It was like one of my travel coaches and my dad. We went and played golf 
and we got through like eight holes and we're like what are we doing like i can't i can't <laughs> so we like we literally st i've never stopped playing golf a, like a round in my life and we stopped after like eight and just like went to like a sports bar and had some lunch and kind of just hung out until at night we had a party at my house so i had a bunch of like family friends over and stuff uh getting ready to watch the draft so actually the night before I had no recollection of, or no like idea of who was going to take me, and I had an interview with Mike Hazen the night before, and it was about a 20-minute phone call. It was the first time I ever talked to him, first time. Uh, that was my first idea that, hey, the backs pick seven, could be a chance. Uh, but the, I actually went to Philadelphia, who picked eight, and like did like the BP on the field and stuff, and got invited to do that. So that's where I was thinking I may go, but then after that call with, uh, with Mike Hazen, it was a little more... Like, man, this could be a real real chance at seven. With the seventh selection of the 2017 MLB draft, the Arizona Diamondbacks select Paven Smith. I had a good amount of excitement, like, right when it happened, but I knew my college roommate, Adam Hazley, was going to be coming somewhat soon. He ended up going right. next pick, so we had, like, two celebrations in a row, so it was pretty cool. Yeah, what was that like? It's, it's just bang, bang, you guys, teammates at UVA, back to back, seven yeah. and eight. Yeah, it was super cool. Growing up in baseball together, coming from when you're 18 years old and really growing and uh, as men together and as baseball players together and living together, it was super cool because he had a great year that year. I had a good year, and it was just like, oh, this could be, you know, something cool that we'll remember forever. So was it a moment where you get selected you're celebrating, there's hugs, there's tears, and then all of a sudden your teammate and your friend goes right after you. Yeah, it was like a hugs, tears, okay, everybody be quiet, I want to see who the Phillies take. And if it's not Adam, then we'll, you know, have the hugs again until the next team. <laughs> but luckily we didn't have to wait very long. And your dad is uh, Tim? Yes. Tell us about him. Him and my mom are both my number one fans. He always wants to... Uh, look at video after and stuff but he was still like he took me to the cages every every day he at first he was the guy that I didn't want to go to the cage and he dragged me to the cage and I'm very thankful for that uh, on the days that I was you know wanting to play hide and go seek which I still did uh, still had my fun times doing that but you know really formed me to the person I am today and super appreciative of that and you know wouldn't be here without him how did he do that? How did he form you? Oh, just making me, he's like a super big spiritual influence on me. I've seen him grow, you know, just watching him uh, grow and change, you know, has made me want to do the same. So, so he had an interesting career, mm -hmm. professional career. Yep. Where were you guys originally? We were in Michigan. Right. So I was born in Michigan, Grand Rapids, Michigan, and he was working at Amway. So I think they did a deal with Gary Player where Gary Player came up to Michigan and did some appearance and- Legendary he, golfer. Yes, he worked with my dad and liked him so much that he offered him a job in Florida. And my dad has always loved golf, always worked at golf courses, played high school golf. And was like, I can't pass up this opportunity to work with a legendary golfer. So we all just packed up and moved to Florida. I was four, had a younger sister at two, and we all just moved down to Jupiter, Florida, where the headquarters are for uh, Gary Player Group. Your dad then moves the family to Florida, becomes a, a golf person with Gary Player. There's connections there. How does that get you to be named after Corey Pavin? So that actually had no correlation whatsoever. Cause, Crazy. Yeah. So and when I was born in 96, they just, I think Corey Pavin might have won the U.S. Open. So you're still and, in Michigan now. Yeah. I yeah. had no idea who Corey Pavin knew who he was, but had no you know, personal interaction with him or anything. And... I just like the name. They want something unique because my dad's Tim Smith, my mom's Pam Smith, and it's like, <laughs> let's get something that's a little different than just the, for a Smith last name, so a unique first name. So they went with uh, his last name, which is Paven. So, and that's amazingly ironic that they just sort of picked a random last name that they liked, gave mm -hmm. it to you for your first name. Yep. Your dad gets into the golf industry. Yep. Does that eventually lead you to to Corey Paven? Yeah. So. My dad stopped working for Gary Player in 2008 because he wanted to, he was traveling, just gone for, you know, weeks at a time. And I was 12 years old playing baseball and he wanted to, you know, see that and 
watch me as a baseball player. So he went into the medical sales where he could stay, you know, in one spot, not having, not having to travel as much. So he stopped working for Gary Player, and about after four or five years, he's kind of over the medical sales and wanted to get back into the golf business. And having contacts from being with Gary Player, he got in contact with Corey Pavin and became his agent. So then he was Corey Pavin's agent, so I got to meet him. Yeah, so. That's unbelievable. Yeah. That he just randomly named you after a golfer and years down the road in a Had completely no different industry. No intention of he's being. He's now representing that person. Yeah, That's no, amazing. No intention of being a golf agent. It just stumbled upon it because he worked at the place that Gary Player was, you know, had an appearance with. So, yeah, it's pretty wow. crazy. Yep. That is amazing. Damon Smith, fly ball, right field, and there it goes. So as you evolve as a baseball player now, you get to high school. I read you were a pretty good pitcher in high school. Yeah. Uh, let's see, got five. The got the scar to prove it. What's that? This is a little Tommy John in first year of college. Get out of here. That's that's a slip through the radar there. Yeah, people can't see it because it's, it's faded yeah. pretty well, so. So that would be 2014? 2015. 15. So it actually happened in 2014, but I played my whole freshman year. I was, went in as a two-way player, pitcher, and a hitter, and tore it in the fall. And it was like, it was partially torn. It wasn't all the way torn. So they, they said we could probably you know, do some temporary holds on it so you can play a position during the season and then get surgery after the season. So I did that, got a PRP shot, sat out the rest of the fall, was ready to go by the spring. And it was funny because like probably halfway through the year, I was doing infield outfield and it felt good again, like after the PRP shot. Right. And you know, I threw one, I was like, oh my gosh. Like I felt it, like it felt it again. And the rest of the year, I just grinded it and didn't even throw before games. Would just, uh, just basically go on adrenaline between every game and waited till after the season to get the surgery. and. We went through some pretty hard slumps my freshman year of college. So we scheduled the surgery as if we weren't going to make the playoffs. And we had to keep pushing it back as we went further. Right. All and, the way. Yeah, we went all the way in one. So my original surgery was set for like May 5th and I didn't get it till July 2nd. So Dr. Andrews, who did my surgery, was like, you're the guy that keeps pushing back the <laughs> surgery. <laughs> there you go. It's a line drive to center. That's a base hit. So in high school, at 5-0 and with an 0 -6 ERA, were you, I know you said you were a two-way player, but was pitching part of the plan moving forward at that point? Oh uh, yeah, I loved to pitch. I know in high school, the Yankees wanted me as a pitcher and not a hitter. Most people were wanting me to hit, but there was a few teams that thought, thought of me as a pitcher. So going to college, I wanted to do both and uh, didn't end up working out that way because I got hurt. And before my junior year, I was going to pitch again. Uh, was like throwing live ABs before before games and stuff, and I just didn't feel right in my elbow, so they just shut me down and said you'll just you'll just hit. So that it's funny because that 2015 season that turned out to be quite a year. You won right. the national championship. Mm -hmm. You're one of the key hitters on the team. Yep. And I had playing with a bum elbow. Yeah. Uh, there were times where I would throw it in from the outfield and be like, if the ball comes to me, I need at least a two minute like buffer zone in between throws. It was pretty crazy. But then funny enough, when you got when I got to the College World Series playing in front of 30,000, didn't feel it one bit. Oh, I bet. And then got into surgery and Dr. Andrews was like, this thing was hanging on by an absolute thread. Oh my goodness. He was like, I don't know how it didn't, didn't blow. Yeah. It was meant to be. Yep, yep, it was pretty cool. I just, I remember when it happened in the, in the fall, like sitting in my dorm room, like crying, like I wasn't gonna be able to play my freshman year of college. I'm just bet. like. But thankfully, it wasn't all the way torn, and I got to you know push through to at least be able to do one of the things that I love doing. So, so you're going in Charlottesville from freshman year in tears in the dorm mm -hmm. because you think you might not be able to play. Mm -hmm. You're able to play, and in that very same year, you win the national championship. Yep. Everything about your life is this crazy roller coaster ride so far. It's yeah, amazing. It was, it was super fun. I mean, I'll cherish that moment forever. Uh, being the first Virginia school to win a national championship, hopefully the first of many, because they're doing very well again this year. But you had your moment, right? 
I want to go game three, mm. Vanderbilt. Yeah. You and Walker Bueller. Mm. It's everything's an amazing time capsule. Right. The way things go with you, it seems like. Tell us about that moment for you. Yeah, I was not having a great College World Series. You know, I had a great freshman year, and you know, just struggling through uh, the whole World Series. I'm just grinding, trying to you know do anything I could to help the team. And I finally broke out in that third game when I think we were, we were down two nothing. They scored two runs in the first in game three, and it was like we gotta gotta find a way. And uh, I think it was Kenny Towns walked that inning, and then I came up and hit a 87 mile hour changeup that may or may not have thought it was a fastball. <laughs> he, <laughs> so he threw me a, threw me a changeup when he throws very, very hard and uh, was able to get the barrel on it and hit it out. That's quite a, a place to get to considering you started in tears in your dorm room thinking you couldn't play. Yeah. That's a journey. Yeah, it was a fun journey. Uh, definitely lots of ups and downs Ended with a very high up, though. So, and then later in that same game, you had the hit that put him ahead, right? Yeah, uh, and then yeah, Adam Hazy was on second, uh, two to two, and I hit one into the. They brought in a lefty to face me, and I hit it in the the six hole, so right into left field, and Adam Adam scored to make it three two. So, when you see Walker Bueller now wearing Dodger blue and you're <laughs> in Sedona red, are there flashbacks? Oh uh, yeah, a little bit. He's gotten a little bit of the best of me now, uh, in the big leagues. I know I had. A, one double off him last year, but it's funny because this offseason he was working out at the same place I was, but never brought it up. You know. Did you guys chat? Is everything oh, cool? Yeah, we talked a little bit. Uh, but not about that. No, I never brought it up. I was going to let him <laughs> if he was going to, but That's I didn't. Very bring polite. It. Yeah, didn't bring it Let's up. Let's consider it. I know he knows, though. So it's you and Amanda, right? Mm -hmm. Tell us about her. I met her actually at Adam Hazley's wedding. So another little Your story. Your connections just keep yeah, coming so around and around. She was the roommate of the bride, Lindsay, Adam's wife, and I was the roommate of Adam. So I was a groomsman, she was a bridesmaid in the wedding. And you know, you kind of do your little scouting reports right. uh, before weddings. And I don't know what you mean. <laughs> that's, the, <laughs> that's the one I had my eye on. And I just knew her as, at first, at the rehearsal, I saw her, didn't know her name, but she was like, I think she came straight from, she was a gymnast, so she came straight from like a gymnastics practice or something. And she had like white Nikes on. So I was like, that's the, the white Nikes girl is the one I want to go. The white Nikes yeah. girl. <laughs> <laughs> Did you tell her that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. funny. So how did that evolve? Uh, yeah, so after that, kind of, I got her number that night and started texting with her and went up to Gainesville a couple times because I was working out in Tampa at the time. So it was like an hour, hour drive to Gainesville, had a couple dates and then asked her to be my girlfriend at the time. And then I was going off to, it was tough because met her in January and I'm leaving, you know, to go across the country in right. six weeks. So it takes a special, Special girl to be on board with that, so appreciate that. Yeah, I was gonna say, did she go, well, what are you, are you yeah. talking about? You're leaving town. I know, well, thankfully, one of her best friends just did it, you know, because oh, she true. just married yeah. Adam, so she had a little of a, you know, a little more insight than some other girls going through that, so. When did you guys get married? In the end of 2020, so. We got engaged before the COVID happened, and then it was like a stressful planning while everything was going on. And we ended up having a relatively normal wedding that Florida would actually let us have, so. Oh, it's true, good. right? Yeah. So you were able to, you didn't have to cancel plans or, no. yeah, there's a lot of people went through no, that. No, well, at, we were thinking maybe like during the summer, it was like, oh, we might have to like move it. And she was super stressed about that, obviously. Uh, and thankfully, didn't have, didn't have to do anything. It's with funny, it. you, you go to UVA, win a national championship as a freshman, make your major league debut, get married in the same year. Mm -hmm. I mean, you don't mess around. You know, it's really funny. Uh, so that year we won the College World Series, she was at Florida, or she wasn't at Florida yet, she was committed to Florida, but she remembers watching the game and rooting against me because she was rooting, because we played Florida twice or three times in that mm -hmm. College World Series. So she remembers watching the games and you know rooting for Florida to beat us. So it's kind of funny. Did she remember the cute redheaded guy playing for Virginia? <laughs> uh, 
I don't know, hopefully. You <laughs> have to ask her. Yeah. Well, it's on tape now, so she yeah. has to say. You guys are settled here now? Yep. Your well, Valley residents? Yep, and she's a personal trainer now at a burn boot wow. camp. Yeah, so they like run little classes over in Gilbert. So if you want to get trained by my wife, you can go over there. There you go. <laughs> nice plug. Yeah. So so she keeps you in good shape. Are you guys like both on top of diet and exercise yeah. and everything? Yeah, she worked out this morning at 8.30. She works out pretty much all the time. She has, after being a college athlete, you know, she couldn't get away from at least, you know, good. doing something athletically. I have uh, gone with her to the burn boot camp once. and it Did is, you survive? I got crushed. Now, is that like the whole CrossFit thing where you're it's climbing ropes and swinging big truck tires? And no, not not totally that, but it is like nonstop. You know, it's like 45 minutes. Yeah. It's quick, 45 minutes, but high intensity. It's not, yeah, there's not much of a break. And I just, yeah, I had flashbacks to college conditioning every time I do it. I've done it twice with her, and I'm like, I think only I'm, twice. I think I'm done. Yeah, <laughs> it's really hard. I would think that that's a great off-season thing. Like you can just check that box, go with your wife a couple of times a week and you're good, no? No, I'll lift weights and it, like sets and get my breaks, get my water instead of just nonstop right. do push-ups for a minute straight. I'm just like <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> I hope this wasn't too painful. No, it was great. Awesome. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you.